if you look really closely, you might be able to tell I'm no longer in Spain. I'm back home in sunny. Can put my sunnies on. It's suddenly got brighter again. Uh, North Wales. What a beautiful day. The UK's had a lot of snow over the last day or two. Here with uh, up there just pointing out Crib Gorch, the Glidera. I know I point them out every time, but look, it's stunning. I can't help myself. Just the view over the lake and everything. Those of you that worry about the dog, don't panic. He is here, there he is. Um, loving life. I kind of, I always say to people, I think he prefers Spain to North Wales, but I think actually what I'm doing there is just projecting my own preferences on him. Um, he's just perma happy, so he doesn't really care where he is really. Although he's not such a fan of the rain these days, a bit like me. Um, today's video is just wrapping up that belay series that I've been doing. So I've done part one and two, which are rope belays and sling belays. Part three is gonna look at what we do when we're using three or more anchors, because the other two, they focused on just two point belays for the sake of simplicity, really. And people ask questions, and I always plan to do the three points uh, kind of belays video as well. So I'll set up in my usual spot just over there above my lovely blue ice octopus rucksack, uh, and you'll join me in a minute and we'll go through that stuff. Now, before I get started, I just want to say I'm not going to be able to show every last combination of three-point belay style setups. It's just not going to be possible, I'm afraid. But I'll try and rattle through the majority of the ones that I regularly do. I think I probably will end up doing all the ones I regularly do. I'm not going to stop and talk about ideas and serene. There's a video up there for that if you've not seen that before and different ways of uh, making sure you're ticking the right boxes to make a safe belay. A lot, they're all going to be really just building on what we've covered in part one and two already. So, hopefully, there won't be anything that jumps out as you as being brand new. It's just combining all those tactics. That's the tricky bit, isn't it? It's knowing which bits of which one to use. Without further ado, let's do it. I've got three bits of kit in there. You know that I, if you've watched the channel a lot, I do have a preference generally for sling belays if I can. Now, I've got with me same as I do every time I go climbing, a 240 centimetre sling. But let's just assume I haven't got that for the moment. It might be I've not taken it on that day or I've left it on a previous belay. Doesn't really matter. Now, I'm using a short sling here. I cannot possibly link all three bits of kit with this short sling. Now, I'm using a snap gate here. This one you can see is on a bit of an edge. So this might be one that actually in real life I would uh, put a second snap gate there and oppose it or use a screw gate. If I put it in the right spot, it's okay. But I just don't want to be faffing around too much in this video. There is a lot of judgment to be had in climbing. What have I done there? Well, I've equalized those two bits just with an overhand, an inline overhand. Other methods are available. Of course, I can't show every last one, but I've equalized those two. That's not doing anything useful for that third one yet. I've got one of these blue ice mission light slings here, 120 centimetre. I'm unlikely to run out of these or those 60s because my sling drawers are made up of them and I've always got a few of these on me. So chances are I can do this. Up to you what you use here in terms of screw gates, snap gates, that just came to hand. Chuck that in, do it up because why not? It is a screw gate. I'm going to link it up to that third one. Now, I probably wouldn't have enough uh, screw gates to do all this and still make myself safe and build a, uh, yeah, the rest of the belay. Um, so I'd have to take some quick drawers apart, some sling drawers apart, but a screw gate came to hand, so I'm going to use it. I've basically made that into one anchor. That's how I think about it. I think of that as now being one anchor and I'm using the third piece to link them together. And just a regular two point belay setup now, isn't it? So what could I do here? I could do uh, my overhand, you know that's normally my preference. I could do uh, the good old girth hitch, lark's foot, same thing, belay. Could put a twist in there if you're inclined as well. There we go, clip myself in, direct belay, do whatever I need to do off that. Simple isn't it? Basically it's just two sets of two point belays, what we've done before. Like I say, it'd be unusual for me not to be able to do that as long as the gear is close enough together. I will come on to what we can do when they're further apart in due course. Let's get these out the way though and drop that because we're done with that. Get this squared away. Chances are I will have a 240 on me. 
I always, always, always take one when I'm trad climbing. It's not to say I've never forgotten one, <laughs> but I have, I do try and take one with me. It's also not to say that I always have one on me. What if I've left it behind on the previous belay and forgotten to take one off my mate? Because it might be I'm block leading and I've built an anchor using the long one and I only carry one. So it could be if I was guiding, I might take two on purpose. Or it could be that my mate has just got one and I've got one. And if I'm leaving one behind, I take it off them and reset. You see what I mean? They're really pretty invaluable though for chucking over big boulders sometimes or these three point belays. Flip. Clip, clip. We're used to making V's. We've got an extra anchor on this one, so we're gonna make two V's, W. Away we go. I've got the join up there out of the way and try and keep that there. So it doesn't get in the way of the knot and stuff. There we go, W shape. What am I gonna do? Big overhand, because you know I like it. There we go. Could I do a girth hitch? Yep, of course you could. If you are doing a girth hitch, sometimes when these are a bit wider, especially in these setups, you might find that when you've done it, it, it pulls a narrow carabiner uh, apart a bit, what we might call a three-way load. So sometimes it's better to spin it round and forget the idea of gravity loading, because actually I don't particularly care about that in most circumstances. Because I'm here, aren't I? If that rattles open, which is really unlikely anyway, it's not like I'm in an industrial setting working with power tools and stuff. If I just look round, it's starting to come undone. Well, I just tighten it up, don't I? It's not rocket science. W, simple. Get myself in, direct belay, indirect belay, whatever you want to do. Sometimes they're far apart, or further apart, and this gives me a bad angle, so it's no use. So I can win myself a bit of extra sling by doing something that we've seen already with two point anchors. Let's just ditch this one for the sake of clarity for a moment. And the two point anchor, we left a little smile of rope in between these two. That keeps them independent, so they're not affecting each other. And then chuck yourself a clove hitch in there. So I'm clove hitched and I'm clove hitched. Piece number three, not doing anything yet. So I'm gonna clip in a single strand of sling, easy for me to say, and bring that down. What have I got? A kind of W, but with a random strand up here. What can I do with this? You get the idea, I'm gonna make a master point. Less strands, so maybe I'd go for a figure of eight to get undone more easily. Maybe I'd go for a girth hitch, who knows? Depends where and what I'm thinking, really. Same thing, isn't it? Kind of a W. I've bought myself a bit of extra angle, potentially. Okay, so that could be useful. Sometimes our kit is so far apart that even the big 240 won't work. I don't tend to carry like a 400, and as I've said before, I'm in the UK, so we're, we're legally obliged not to carry a cordlet. Um, so this might not be any use. Let's ditch this for a minute then. I could combine tactics, couldn't I? And I'll come back to combining tactics in a minute. If they were truly miles apart, I'm gonna do what anyone who is not from Britain gets a bit excited about and says is weird and crazy and we're all gonna die which is the out of reach setup. So I'll get myself down here, clove hitch, get myself a big HMS if I can. This is a, a phantom HMS. Clip my clove hitch into my rope loop. Not gonna do it up yet because I need something else in there. Adjust that so it's nice and tight. Oh, dog's making an appearance. Piece number two, not doing anything yet. So yeah, another clove hitch. This is what we've done before in those other videos. Chuck that in. Now, I don't really have a lot of space for a third clove hitch, as in I haven't got any really. So I've got two options. I'm gonna do that up now because I'm finished with it. In an ideal world, piece number three would be in reach. So I could just go up to it, put myself a clove hitch in it, and as I sit back, everything tightens up. I've got all three pieces doing something useful for me. You can actually adjust the clove hitch from quite far away. You pull the middle strand, you can take that with you and then when you're where you need to be, slight twist going on there, where, when you're where you need to be, take a step towards the anchor and tighten it up a touch more, pull this random strand, that locks the clove hitch, and now as you sit back, everything is nice and tight. Might take you a bit of practice to get that dialed, but take the middle strand with you and then pull that strand to tighten it up. So you can do that when you're away from the anchor. 
look, equalised, all good. It's not always the case though, sometimes it's so far apart and this can be a bit of a faff to do that um, adjustment from far away. So I could just go for another truly out of reach anchor. Can't go into this one because I've said it's not big enough. I get another screw gate, there you go, simple. But well, if I haven't got any more screw gates, I don't carry loads, I can't always have another screw gate. Would a snap gate work? Yeah, a snap gate would work. There's a lot going on here though. It'd be easy to accidentally open a snap gate. So I'm gonna go a bit old school here. I'm gonna to step towards the anchor a little bit. I'm gonna push a bite of rope through my rope loop that I've created. Pull yourself plenty through. And now what I'm gonna do is tie, what's that? It's an eight, isn't it? A figure of eight. I'm gonna tie that figure of eight sort of around itself, encapsulating my belay loop. And then as I sit back, it's tight. That's good, I can snug it up a bit. Tight, and it's fixed by the figure of eight. These are fixed by clovitches. Disadvantage of an eight over a clovitch in normal circumstances, a bit less easy to adjust. It is less easy to adjust here, but it's the last one, I can get it done like this. I can't do a clovitch realistically around there, so a figure of eight works really well. Old school, I like it. I did say that sometimes we'll combine tactics and we'll combine slings and ropes when we're doing these uh, three-point anchors. Obviously, I could do a part four to this series of videos. Okay, what do we do with four-point anchors? But if you can do this uh, with the other videos, you'll be understanding what you need to do. So I won't do that video, you'll be glad to know. Right, got my trusty 120 out. I'm going to join these two bits of kit with whatever method you want to join. Let's just do the overhand. Get something in there. Screw gate because I've got one. My rope's going to go into there. You can see where this is going. All I've done now, as I trample one of my slings into the mud, all I've done here is create a two-point belay setup, isn't it? This is no different to the first video I did. It's an out-of-reach setup with two points. Clovich is going in. Done. Not doing it up, I'm getting ahead of myself there. Point number three, which really, in this kind of thing, is the second point for the rope. Clovitch, get that in, get it adjusted, do it up as well. There you go. Just a two point setup, really, isn't it? That just happens to have a sling involved in it. Last one I'll show you before we wrap up and think that the series of videos is done. I hope it's been a useful series because I, I kind of wanted to make it like a little bit of a resource really that you could go and look at as a bit of a reference. Obviously there's books and things out there isn't there? Mountain Training have got a new or new uh, version of one out called Rock Climbing uh, and it's really good, it's really thorough but I don't know, videos are just nicer sometimes aren't they? A bit easier to understand. The pictures are very good in that book but I do like a video personally. Three points, we're going to combine these tactics. What's that? It's a clovitch. What's that? It's another clovitch. Little smaller rope. This looks really very similar to that sling setup, doesn't it? Where we did exactly the same with the long sling. I can now get myself fixed in with a clovitch. So far, so good. Two points doing something useful. Point number three choices. Could close it straight to it, couldn't I? If it was in reach, that'd be nice, nice and neat. I could, if I'm a bit further away, it made more sense to do that. Do that, okay. Done. I said that was the last one. It's the last one, apart from the other one that I want to show you. Um, they're all, you know, rope belays, the versions I've shown you, they're all kind of for indirect belays, aren't they? hear you saying yes they are but we don't always want to do that do we sometimes we want good old guide mode good old direct belaying just dressing my knot after i've pulled it around a bit clip in clip in clip in give yourself a bit of slack some judgment required here because i'm pulling extra slack through i'm still on belay but i could take a whipper at this point obviously what shape am i going to make uh, it's always a W with three points, isn't it? How many strands of rope do I need coming out the back of the knot? Two, 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 two for me as well. 
must remember that you always want an even number with this setup coming out the back. It's going to be a chunky knot because there's loads of strands of rope, but we can squeeze in an overhand, pull it snug, get these all dressed up nicely, squeeze it up, pull any strands there to try and get things. There we go, moving through. There we go, that's it, even better, nice and neat. I've got a bit of slack there, so it depends what kind of ledge I'm on. If I'm on a you know a sketchy ledge then I can clove it into these master points sometimes I might enjoy actually a bit of movement when I'm direct belaying off there depends very much on the circumstance doesn't it remember loads of ways of doing these things I've shown you some and even those there's variations on those and combinations of those but if you watch part one and part two I think this one will make sense and hopefully tie up a few loose ends I hope it's been useful. As always, massive thanks for watching. If you've got any questions at all, chuck them in the comments below and I'll answer as best I can. Uh, it takes me a while sometimes, but I do get round to them all eventually. If you've liked the video, that's great. Click the like button, smash the subscribe button. You can also find us on Insta and Facebook. I post loads of random stuff on there as well, uh, aside from these videos. And uh, don't forget, you can use the Buy Me A Coffee link to support the channel. That's always super appreciated. As always though, massive thanks for watching. More videos coming up very soon.